Hey y'all, happy Sunday. I hope that you will end up having a wonderful day. Um, it is morning right now where I am, so just trying to uh, fully wake up and get some energy. But anyway, this review is for the latest episode of Power. I think that it was called The Devil Within or The Evil Within or Evil Inside, The Devil Inside, one of them. One of those four things. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm going to try to make this as short as possible. Like, really short. Um, and I'm going to try to go off off the dome. So, we're going to see how that goes. So, this episode, um, Tasha goes and talks to her man, Silver. And... Um, once he's convinced that she's telling the truth about not protecting ghosts, he's all here for, you know, let me laugh at you because you're trying to protect your son. So, you know, I was like, yeah, I figured he would. Like, you could tell he really loves her. So then, um, uh, at one point in time, after it was revealed to them that he was on board with that, ghosts went and rolled up on him while he was in uh one of those parking garages and you know basically told him like yeah you better corroborate her story and he looking like and if i don't what like it's like why are you rolling up on <laughs> like he rolling up i'm just like you ain't in no position to roll up on nobody sir who are you <laughs> who, who are you who who are you <laughs> like i can't like when i tell you i can't i just be looking like bro what are you talking about so you know all in all, to end that arc um, for this time, when he did that, that jilted him, uh, so to speak. And Tasha went over one day. All the lights was off. She looking like, what in the world going on right here? Had all kinds of paperwork. Uh, I think the subpoena was on some desk or on a um, counter. And he put a note on it saying that he was sorry. So he had left town. <laughs> Terry got tired. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe this. So that's the end of what happened with that. So now everybody looking like, okay, we all about to be screwed because if it hadn't been for him, you know, they wouldn't even have a chance. Now they literally basically don't have a chance. So uh let's see. Ghost um met up with Tate. And Tate wanted to talk to him, and he's looking like, okay, what we got to talk about today? Because every time he meet up with Tate, it's something every single time. We didn't got to that point now. It's like, all right, what's the problem today? What we doing today? I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just like, why we got to meet up? I would be mad, too. I feel like every time I look up, I got to come meet up with you. But anyway, he told him that. Um, well, he asked him, like, how did he even know that he was trying to run for governor or whatever. And that, you know, he actually confirmed that he was gonna run for go for governor. And he was like, you know, how you know? He was like, don't worry about all that. You know what I'm saying? And you know, they got to talking and eventually Tate was like, look, you're off the project. I don't want to do with you. And I'm going to return every single cent you ever gave to me once I actually announced my run and all that stuff. I was like, oh gosh, you done went off, sir. <laughs> so of course ghost is next and I'm just like oh my gosh so then another time after that ghost wants to meet up with him he looked like okay what you want James so he was like you know I remember you know remember you told me that you know you kicked me off of this project or whatever and uh, what happened was Jamie met up with this guy who like works for Tate and he was like oh you ain't know he be skimming money off the top of all the money that he be getting for that project and so he was like okay so what happened was when he met up with Tate this last time <laughs> and Tate rolled up in there like and what you want he played back that beautiful bean footage which was you know <laughs> by audio Basically saying, telling when that guy actually said what he said to him when he was asking questions and the dude told him everything he needed to know 
I'm just like, oh my gosh. So he shut up then. And so, yeah, he's back on it. Because <laughs> if that information gets released, his career is going to be over before it even starts as far as the gubernatorial elections and all this stuff. <sighs> so anyway, that's over and done with that. So this episode, um, Andre, Dre, whatever, and um, ghosts are supposed to kill uh, these different connects separately. So with the connect that Ghost was supposed to kill, they ended up changing what was supposed to happen. And Ghost was like, look, he asked Kanan if he would kill the guy for him. And he was like, why? He was like, because he would see me coming from a mile away. He won't even see you coming. So Dre, on his end, he set up how the meet was supposed to go, which was he met up with those guys. And uh, <laughs> he basically, you know, gave him the money that he owed him. And he was like, you know, look, I want you to come by and I'm gonna have a little party because you know how that guy get down. That guy likes to party, have sex, do drugs, all that stuff. And like whoever this guy is, who's like his right hand man, was there with him. And he was like, look, we're gonna come to this. You need to have some BBWs on hand for him because I want him to enjoy himself too. He deserves it. He here for me, all this other stuff. I was like, oh my, I bust. I laughed so hard, I couldn't even believe. <laughs> I couldn't even believe it. I don't know why. I never really hear anybody say that on like real TV shows about BBW. So it's like, what? Yeah, it just said BBW. But anyway, so when the meet happened, um, one of um, one of Dre's people was telling him that Dre, Dre is gonna be there in a few minutes, but you can go on in and enjoy yourself. So they went in the back way, and they had these little like arrows and stuff leading to where they were supposed to go. And so, right when they came in, this one particular doe, Kanan came in and shot him and killed both of them. Okay, so then on the other side of town, Dre went to the area that the meat for the other connect was going to be. But what happened was, Kanan did his job at the time he did his job. And it's hilarious because Dre said he can't be in two places at once. <laughs> but it's hilarious because it was like... Kanan went, did his job real quick, sped over to wherever the other meat was, and met up with that guy, and chopped off the head to these people, put them in a bag, and was like, look, we did this for you. And, you know, I did what Dre and, um, oh, wait a minute, I did what Tommy and Ghost couldn't do as quickly or whatever, and he was like, okay. So he was like, well, you know, thank you or whatever. And so then he, you know, basically told the guy what all was going down with the situation where he was about to get killed by Dre. And so he was like, well, you know, since he coming, all right, we, we can just hit him off at the pass and kill him first. He was like, no, nah, man, we got to wait because after that person got killed, the woman who always meets up with Dre, he got to, you know, see what her move is going to be. So they needed him. So he was like, you know, you got to get out of here. You're going to be here in a few minutes. So he gathered up all his people. And he left. So Dre come in in some kind of whack disguise. <laughs> like he is like a maintenance guy slash uh, uh, room service person that actually is going to clean. Like he just had a hat on. I'm like, you, you got all you did was put a hat on and a uniform, but you still had all your blinged out jewelry on. Like he had the big earrings in his head. I was like, <sighs> not a good disguise sir so you're doing the least in your life then he went in there he didn't uh open up his little his little uh hidden compartments i guess of the little uh cart that he was pushing and he proceeded to put his little gun together and then he walked down the hall to where the meat was gonna be at and he didn't see nobody over there so he was looking like oh my gosh looking around trying to figure out what happened so and, uh, you know, that situation is over and done with. He's just trying to figure out what happened. So, um, uh, as far as that, that uh, particular part of the story goes, one of Dre's people who told Kane all this information about the meetup and all that stuff and how they were going to kill him, he ended up saying to this other guy who 
uh, got in trouble before for doing things that Drake didn't tell them to do on their own, he ended up saying, well, we waiting on these Serbian people and I'm going to go work for Canaan and them and all this other stuff. And he was like, well, you know, wherever you go, I'm going to go. And I'm just like, you're going to die. I don't know how it's going to happen because everybody who sit up there and just want to be a part of this life, they end up getting killed, trying to follow somebody else, trying to do the most. And I'm just like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, they really be trying to do the most. And I'm just like, that's stupid. Anyway, um, let me see. So, I'm going to bring up Tommy and Keisha. So, even though their relationship is semi-disturbing to me, I kind of like it. Their situation is way more genuine than what his situation was with, what's her name, Holly? He ended up having to kill her. I don't think Keisha would do anything that would make him look at her sideways and be like, you need to kill her because she might try me. <sighs> so, uh, well, let me back up. So, um, Tommy ended up calling his dad or texting him, telling him, I need to meet up with you or whatever. Oh, no, his dad had texted him and was like, I got let's meet up. Come pick me up. So, I picked him up and he was like, yeah, I got to connect. I got somebody that can meet that you can meet with um, about something. So, ended up meeting with the dude and I'm thinking everything all right. So, the daddy, uh, what's his name, Tony, he ended up trying to get the money from the guy who he was meeting up with. And he was like, something don't feel right about this suitcase or whatever. So he opened the suitcase. All the money isn't in there. So he ended up telling Tommy and the other guy that was with him, who was kind of like his right-hand man, um, the daddy's right-hand man, always there. He was the one who always looked out for the wife and made sure everything was all right with her. Always checking on her while he was in uh, prison. But they ended up tying the dude up and... Uh, Tommy's daddy ended up putting a drill through this dude's kneecap. Then he ended up, if he didn't die, it's a miracle. He ended up putting that drill bit through the middle of his skull. I was just like, y'all is doing the most. So anyway, um, it had gotten to the point where uh, Mock and that other guy, John Mock and that other guy, rolled all the way up to Terezi's house. What's his name? Tony Terezi. Uh, who is, you know, Tommy's dad, rolled up to the house. And he looking like, y'all don't get in here. Don't nobody, don't be rolling up in my neighborhood. Don't nobody need to see y'all here. And then he get jammed up. It's like, come on now. So he ended up telling him to come on in the house. His wife sit on the couch. And they try to be like, hey, Mrs. Therese. She like, F y'all. <laughs> I was just like, man. <laughs> Set it off like that. Oh, for real. I would have been like, mm, or something. Like, she was just like, it's the little like. She, you could tell that she about to be gone soon because she's just like, I don't care. I'm not finna sugarcoat nothing. I'm not even finna play this game. Like, if y'all. Anyway, he talking to them. And he looking like, what y'all want? So, it was like, um, you haven't given us any... Well, they had a meeting at the office and that woman that's over them was like, they haven't given them really any information since he's gotten out. And they need to get something now. So that they can actually uh, pin some stuff uh, to and have really good evidence to get these people, anybody, whether it's James, Angela, mainly Angela, uh, get them locked away, have something to salvage the case with. So they're talking to him and he was like, you need to get some information like now. And so he was like, well, what kind of information do you want? So ended up telling a uh, story. Uh, eventually they ended up telling them about a death that happened at the um, prison when uh, Jamie was in prison with them and he ended up, you know, killing, you know, the guard who was played by <sighs> Charlie Murphy, rest in peace, and um, that other big guy who he ended up fighting, he killed all of them, and so, um, but he, they were looking like, well, did you see about anything? He was like, yeah, you, you could say that, so... He knew the situation went down. So, um, so that was some information that he had to kind of keep him still on the outside for now. So they're like, yeah, you need to still find some more information out. So anyway, uh, fast forward again. So when Tommy, that guy, and his daddy were done basically killing that man in that warehouse, wherever they were, his daddy was like, well, you need to come over and have dinner with me and my wife, Connie, I think her name is. 
And he was like, I don't like that. So then the dude in the back who has been loyal as I don't know what, he started, he was like, oh, yeah, I, I miss her cooking. Or something he said, and Tony was like, yeah, I'm going to need you to sit this one out. This is just going to be family. I know. I thought that dude was going to be like, what you mean, family? You just met this guy. I thought he was going to read, be like, I've been your family for the past however years since you've been locked up. And even before you got locked up, and he ain't saying that. I was like, sir, I would have been reading. <sighs> so anyway, ended up, um, fast forward. They end up having dinner together. And um, uh, I'm thinking before that, what happened was she, the, the, his wife asked him, was Tommy his son? And he was like, I'm sorry, whatever, whatever. And she was like, I already knew about the affair when it happened. But I wasn't sure if that uh he was hurt his child and she said she heard about it but she didn't know for, for certain she said she heard like way after the fact that there was a child and so he was like can you please forgive me i'll die if you if you never forgive me for that and she sat there for a second slapped a fire to him i was like ma'am <laughs> she got tired of that spirit and so after she slapped him she was like i forgave you years ago for all this stuff that you did to me so then they went somewhere else went to another um scene Anyway, continuing on with Tommy's um, connection to this story, this particular part of the story. So after all this, all that went down where he was invited to dinner, he, uh, oh, before that happened. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, he got invited to dinner. So when they were eating dinner, they were trying to have a conversation with um, um, Tommy. And so they were like, well, do you have a special woman in your life? And so he was like, yeah, I did. And. She don't live in New York no more or wherever, somewhere. She don't live in New York no no more. And he was like, and then, you know, eventually he was like, well, you know, I'm kind of dating somebody. I've been seeing her on and off. And so they're looking like, oh, okay, well, you know, you're really serious about her. You should bring her around sometime. Bring her to dinner. And so they was like, hmm, I think about it. I might do that. So he pops up at Keisha's house. And so he was like, Hey Keisha, how you doing? Can I come in? Y'all know how Tom, you all know how Tommy is. Tommy is just so <laughs> his demeanor is just I can't. So she was like, yeah, sure. Came on in, got to talking to her about what happened. And so she was like, Are you serious? So, you know, he it's like he threw it out there that that situation is something that was presented to him. But the way he said it, it was like, yeah, they want to, you know, they they want to meet you, but, you know, you probably don't want to go and, you know, somebody else would be happy to uh, have you on your arm, on, on their arm to be in a situation like that or whatever. So she looking like, you know, if you're serious, let's do this then. So basically they are in a relationship officially again, like, oh, for real, for real this time. They are together. They screwed. <sighs> um... And uh, they fast forwarded to um, when Tasha and Keisha met up and they ate together. And Oh, before I go to that, Tommy actually spent the night. She was shocked, Keisha. She was very shocked. She was like, you're still here. He was like, yeah, where else would I be? I was like, oh, gosh. So you could tell he really likes her a whole lot. So anyway, Keisha met up with Tasha and they were talking and... Um, Keisha kind of talking about the situation where he wanted to meet up with her for a uh, dinner with his daddy and his wife. And she was like, father, what father, his daddy been dead. And so, you know, Tasha is like stuck and like, I don't know what you're talking about, but his daddy dead. You need to like, who is he? She was like, look, it don't matter about that. We're together and all this other stuff. Like she is like, you can tell she's on cloud nine. And anyway, they started going back and forth about their relationships. And so she was like, well, Terry wants to be with me and, you know, whatever. And so um, while they were in the middle of everything, she get a text message from Terry. And she was like, yeah, Terry wants to meet up with me later. So she was like, girl, you better go over there and get that. I was like, oh, gosh. She was like, oh, you know, you know me. Trust me. That's what's going to happen. <sighs> so anyway. Um, what else happened? So that's about all that happened uh, with Keisha this episode. Um, 
What else? Anything else of importance happened? Didn't nothing else really happen, in my opinion. I feel like I'm leaving something out. Oh, um, that guy who was always with John Mock. He met up with Proctor at his office. I think he was in his his actual office at the place at that um building. I forgot what the name of it is. But anyway, he was like, you know, what you want? What you want to see me for? He was like, close the door. So he looking like, okay. So he was like, you know, I need your help on something. And so he was like, what? So he was like, I need to know if you have any information on Angela Valdez. And so he's looking like, what kind of information? So he was like, anything that will prove that she was a part of a murder. So he was looking like, murder? What are you talking about? So he was like, are you sure you don't know nothing about her? Like, any information you're just keeping it from me? He was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So he was like, look, if you can figure out and find out some information, I will get you back reinstated as a lawyer. So Proctor's ears perked up when he heard that. So, you know, I understand. Mine would have perked up too. <laughs> I've been doing all this stuff, trying to walk in the straight and narrow, and I've been just really, really, really on it. I would have been the same way. So he was like, all I got to do is make a phone call, make two phone calls. And so Proctor was like, he tried to call his bluff, like, all right, we'll make the phone call then. That man politely picked the phone up right then and there, hit one button that was on speed dial, whatever the number was that was on speed dial. He hit that button and he uh, was getting uh, the person who's over the board, uh, the uh, licensing board, I think. I think that's what it is. I don't know why I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, got them on the phone and then they, you know, went somewhere else. But then later on, Proctor and Tommy meet up. I guess, uh, I think Tommy wanted to meet up with him. So he let him know he got reinstated. So what happened was he got reinstated and he was coming to Tommy to ask him if he knew anything about Angela uh, covering up any murders or whatever. And so he was like, what? So, <laughs> Uh yeah, that happened with that and what else? Anything else happen? Um, of course, Ghost and uh Angie. Uh oh, Ghost ended up texting Angie after he, you know, basically played tape <laughs> and was like, Yeah, we need to celebrate at dinner at your house or whatever. So they ended up having dinner at the house and then Tasha rolled up. And that's why all that, situ that situation happened earlier where I was letting y'all know that he said something, she said something. She came to the house and popped up while they were in the middle of having dinner. And so she was mad. She was like, what did you say? What did you say to Terry? And so, you know, he was like, same thing I told you. He ain't, you know, strong enough. He, he ain't strong enough to handle a, situ a situation like that. He ain't man enough. So he was like, well, whatever you did, he skipped town, whatever, whatever, and all this other stuff. So now everybody's trying to figure out what they can do in order to save themselves. So it's sad. So uh, also uh, Tasha rolled up with the gun. So Angela looking like, wait a minute, baby. <laughs> looking like, wait a minute. She was like, where, where did the gun come from? I thought you said you got rid of it. She was like, insurance. I was like, oh gosh, no. So she brought that gun over there and she was just like, look, I don't know what we're going to do, but got to figure something out now. So Ghost was like, look, Tasha was like, the only thing we can do, he, they were looking like, okay, well, what are we going to do? Because, I mean, he was like the only way that they were going to get off or have a good chance of getting off. And Tasha was like, the only thing we can do. She basically said she was going to go down for it because, you know, of course, she didn't want to turn him in. And um, also, um, let me rewind a little for a second. Terry was trying to convince Tasha to just let her son confess to it because since he's a minor, they wouldn't really, you know, sentence him like that because he's a juvenile. She wasn't trying to hear that. She don't want him to see the inside of the bar. She, you know, fed him that line about him being a young black man in America and all the other stuff. And so... He was just like, okay, yeah, I'll do it for you. Then they screwed. So, <laughs> but anyway, back to where I was. Natasha was about, was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn myself in. So then Ghost was like, no, this is my family. If anybody gonna, anybody's going to go down for something, it's going to be me. And so, like, the way he was saying certain things, Angie was looking at him like, what are you doing the most, sir? You act like the way he was talking is like he, he was passionate 
towards Tasha's, I don't want to say plight per se, but it just seemed like he was like all, all here for her, which he should because that's still legally his wife or whatever, but I'm just saying. So, uh, uh, of course, dummy, you know, Tariq is still out here hanging out with Kanan and I thought he was going to have sense for a quick second. Of course, he didn't. So what happened was, the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, earlier in the episode, he finally listened to that voicemail message that his daddy left for him. Like, it had to be like days ago, <laughs> I guess, in TV time. And he had like he had a heart for half a second. And he was like, I got your message, but he didn't send it. So then he just erased the message. And then he went to his little burner phone in the drawer and... Uh, called Kanan and was like, yeah, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to be by that life. I was like, oh, I'm so tired. So then they ended up going to some kind of strip club or something, Kanan and um, Tariq, and they were talking. And then that's when they ended up, um, um, he ended up having to take him home because he got a message. Um, I think that was when the setup was going to happen, when Ghost wanted to meet up with him and all that stuff. But yeah, I had to make sure I backtracked about that. So yeah, that's where we are now. I don't understand why Tommy is so stupid. And in my mind, I'm hoping that his father is really going to get a heart because when he had that heart to heart with his wife after that, which I didn't mention, his him and his wife had a heart to heart. And she was like, look, I hope, you know, she got the hint. Like she could tell, like after those people left and wanted him to dime out his son, he was, she was just like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got much time. I ain't got much time with you no more and you need to have a family around you and I hope you don't end up sending your son to jail, prison, whatever, and all this other stuff. So it seemed like it was hitting him a little bit, but I mean, it's like, how he going to stay out if he don't provide no information? The only way I see it happen is if he finds information on ghosts, any kind of information on him that doesn't implicate him that he can prove so they can at least have something to work with. But I don't know how that's going to happen but because I could have swore the agreement was they were going to get information on Tommy. So, I don't know. Maybe he'll be able to find bigger fish for them to deal with. But anyway, again, that was the review for Power. I hope that y'all end up having a wonderful day. I hope the weekend was wonderful. Um, y'all have a nice day. Bye.